Uh, with us now is Martin Mubanga, a former Guantanamo detainee. Uh, welcome, Martin. Good evening. Did you uh, know Sammy? Yeah, I knew Sammy. Uh, I spent uh, three years in Guantanamo Bay, and over that time I had the privilege, I say, to uh, have met him and spent some time with him and got to know him. You got to know him. What are your thoughts, what are your recollections of Sammy? Uh, in the beginning, I remember Sammy to have been uh, a quiet, quiet guy, um, very diplomatic, and the kind of person who wouldn't cause trouble or like um, was very, like, uh, very rarely like in trouble or with any confrontation with the guards. But towards the end, um, before I left, basically, uh, I found that more and more confrontations with the guards, more and more confrontations, confrontations with the guards. between Sammy and the guards. Yeah. Why do you think that was? Was that frustration building up or? I think basically he was frustrated with um, the way he was being treated by the Americans, by the interrogators, persistently asking the same questions and uh, knowing what, that he was what, what sort of questions? Um, you know, are you a member of Al-Qaeda? Will you work for us? Um, we know you're innocent. They'd play mind games. One time they'd be saying he's innocent. Another time they'd be saying, will you work for us? Um, you know, like withholding letters from his family, that sort of thing. So I think in the end... Um, is this in the first year, the second year? No, that been in what the, sort of time in, scale is this? That would be in, in the last year there, so it would be in the third year that I was there. So the third year, right. That, um, these things started to happen. And I remember one particular incident, incident that I mentioned before, that, um, where Sammy refused to go out for rec, uh, for rec uh, recreation, recreation yeah. uh, along with many other brothers who refused to go out for rec uh, recreation. And uh, subsequently he was um, earthed by the Earth Team Extraction Force. Earthed? Earth Team, I IRF Team. What, 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 this is the mean? team where the American soldiers come in in riot gear and they remove you by force from your cell. And um, basically, they, about five of them went in there in their riot gear, bombed the cell to the floor. So the, the soldiers are coming in in their riot gear yeah. and they pull him by force out of the cell yeah. because he won't go outside for recreation. Yeah. So he's trying to make a protest. That, exactly. But he wasn't um, looking to fight anybody, but he just simply refused to go outside of his cage. And in the result, um, he got pepper sprayed and his eye was very badly beaten, uh, by, 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 uh, badly bruised, and he was beaten and taken out. And this happened um, like one or two, uh, about two times that I saw, as well for going interrogation. He refused to go to, into interrogation again for the same reason, and again he was beaten. How often would Sammy be interrogated? Um, periodically, maybe like two or three times in a day for a period of three or four days consistently. Then you'd be left alone for maybe a week or two or a month, and then they'd start again. And what sort of questions uh, you're a member of, or oh, are you a member of Al-Qaeda, hard and soft treatment, th that kind of thing? Well, they'd ask you that, like they'd ask everybody. But um, I think it was established early on that Sammy was not a member of Al-Qaeda or of any other terrorist organization. And then subsequently, they wanted him to work, uh, work for them, work on their behalf. The same as I asked myself to work on their behalf. And when they refused to work, so they for asked them, you yeah. to work for them. What, go back to the West, or? Well, basically, this was prior to my going into Guantanamo Bay. They asked me to work for them, and then whilst I was there, you know, they tried to say that we have like um, common agendas and common issues. But you know, once you've been mistreated, as they mistreat you there, how are you then going to go work, work for them, even if you have similar interests or similar goals? Can you uh, tell us or describe for us uh, the conditions Sammy was held in? Uh, I, I'm talking about his cell, uh, the block. Uh, whereabouts he was held? Well, I do know that um, Sammy went to uh, a regular, uh, regular isolation, which is, uh, well, it's, uh, you can touch both sides with your hand and foot on either side. You can touch both sides both of the sides. cell, so you're talking about five foot wide? Yeah, one, one hand there and your foot on the wall on the other side. So I'd say that less than, less than five feet. And also uh, the toilet is incorporated in, within that space as well. So it's maybe like um, two or three steps forward and back which is what he used to do, walking up and down in our, in our cages. So and how long would he be put in isolation, as you call it, um, for, um, at a stretch? It depends. I know some people who were there for a maximum isolation for like a year, solid. So I think in Sammy's case, um, while I was there, maybe two month stretches like this. Um, how would you describe the effect of two months in isolation in a cell five foot wide would have on a man? Well. In Sammy's case, I think it, ma it made him stronger. When I saw him uh, in, the, in the last years becoming, should we say, more, um, 
you would say, um, Paul's um, taking a stance against the American authorities, then um, basically he was a man of, of resolve, who refused to be broken because at the end of the day, he was telling the truth, he was not a member of Al-Qaeda, and he wasn't no terrorist, so therefore he had truth on his side and he, he had a grievance, and he had a point to make and a point to prove, so therefore he had truth on his side, so therefore he was not going to be broken. Uh, you know how you felt when you were freed from Guantanamo. Yeah. Uh, how or can you describe the sort of impact freedom might have on Sami? What he'll be feeling in that plane coming towards Khartoum? Well, personally, like when I was on the plane, um, I remember being surrounded by, um, as we say, various coppers or all Bill who spoke Cockney. And uh, every time I sat there looking at them, I thought I was dreaming. And when I fell asleep, I would think I was back in Guantanamo Bay. And I thought that was reality. So basically, what I'm saying is that he won't believe he's free. I think he's actually on the ground, maybe in the, in the arms of his family, um, with his, with his uh, son as well. That's when only then it will probably begin to sink in that he's actually free. On the plane, he's probably still thinking that he, he's just in a dream and it's not happening. Martin Mubanga, thank you very much indeed. And uh, Sami Al Hajj is on a way to seeing his son for the first time in six and a half years and will be at Khartoum to see it. For the moment, thank you. Thank you.